What's up everybody and welcome back to Nursing Without Notes. Nurse Jared here and in this video, we'll be concluding our comprehensive lecture series on diabetes mellitus with a focus on client education. We'll begin by discussing the 15-15-15 rule and delve into the specific details of the 15 grams of carbs that make up one of those 15s. Following that, we'll shift our attention to essential foot care practices for individuals with diabetes. And finally, we'll explore what patients should do when they're feeling a bit under the weather. Let's kick things off by discussing how to manage mild hypoglycemia when the client is fully conscious. Hypoglycemic episodes can occur unexpectedly at any time of the day, and having a reliable rule to follow can help raise blood glucose levels back into the normal range. This rule is known as the 15-15-15 rule, which means consume 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrates, wait for 15 minutes, then recheck the blood glucose level. If the blood sugar remains below 60, consume an additional 15 grams of carbs. This approach is the recommended way to address hypoglycemia when blood glucose levels fall below 70. It's a valuable strategy to know even if you don't have diabetes as it can be helpful if your blood sugar drops during exercise or other activities. All right, everybody, let's finish up the last part of our diabetes lecture series by wrapping up this mind map and then finishing up the last bit of our cards. And after we finish that up, we'll be able to see all these connections that we've made throughout this diabetes lecture series and have an amazing deck that we can study all those facts and be able to visualize all that information in that network type fashion, sort of in the way our brains organize material instead of a linear fashion that you usually see in those textbooks. So with that said, let's finish up the last part of this lecture series. All right, so our map is getting a little bit crowded. So I think maybe I'll move this over here just, just a touch. All right, so our patient education starts off with that management of mild hypoglycemia with the 15-15-15 rule, and then it goes into the nutrition therapy. So let's go ahead and add in our 15-15-15 rule to start off with, and then we'll move into what the 15 grams of fast-acting carbs looks like, and then we'll add in for the severe hypoglycemia. So let's give ourselves a branch called management of hypoglycemia. All right, let's add in our 15, 15, 15 rule now. Fifteen grams of fast acting carbs. Then we'll wait 15 minutes, recheck the glucose, and then give 15 more if the glucose level is not above 70 yet. Nice little rule to remember. This is looking good, so let's hop over to Anki and make a card over the 15-15-15 rule. Let's go into our diabetes mellitus deck, and let's hit add. We're going to stick with the closed deletions, make sure we're in the right deck. And let's go ahead and add in our topic at the top of the card here. As always, I'm going to add in an emoji here just for fun. Double click and control B will bold all that. And underneath I'll add in patient education. And we'll add in another emoji just because I like emojis. And let's not forget to add our tags in. We'll do diabetes DM glucose. And we'll make sure our toggle stickies are selected so we can make multiple cards. And for this card, I'm just going to make a real simple closed deletion card. I'm going to take our chart over here. I'll paste it in. And what I'll do is the 15, 15, 15 rule. It's just three steps with our 15s. So I'll just go ahead and close off these part. Wait 15 minutes. Now that I've got all three of these lines closed out, I'll swap these numbers over to one and we'll just make one card over each three lines. And then that way when we go to test ourselves, we can just go ahead and answer all three of those real quick. 
I don't see a big need to make three different cards of this. That would be a little superfluous. We'll just go ahead and leave this as one nice card over the 15, 15, 15 rule and control enter and we'll add that to our deck. Now let's dive into what 15 grams of carbs actually looks like. There are various options to choose from, but here's a list of classic examples you might encounter in healthcare orders, nursing exams, or the NCLEX. Encourage patients to keep a few of these items at home and carry them while they're out and about. Fruit juice. You can opt for a half a cup or 120 milliliters of fruit juice. Often you'll find convenient four ounce juice containers in healthcare settings. Side note, to assist you further, remember these unit conversions. One cup equals eight ounces. One ounce equals 30 milliliters. Five milliliters equals one teaspoon. And one tablespoon equals three teaspoons. These conversions are not only useful for exams, but also when documenting intake and outputs during charting. Soda. If your patient isn't a fan of juice, they can consume half a cup of their favorite soda. However, be sure to inquire about their soda preferences, as diet sodas may lack the sugar needed to raise blood sugar levels. Skim milk. 8 ounces or 240 milliliters of skim milk also equals 15 grams of carbs. This is a versatile option whether your client enjoys cereal or prefers milk in their coffee. Hard candies. Keeping 6 to 10 hard candies on hand is a practical choice. Clients can store them in their car, purse, or backpack for easy access. Plus, offering a sweet treat could lead to some friendly interactions. Sugar. In some cases, 4 cubes or teaspoons of sugar may be an option although it's less common and perhaps more suitable for a restaurant setting. Saltines. Six saltine crackers can be a popular choice and are often conveniently packaged for portability. However, they're not known for any gourmet awards. Graham crackers. Three graham crackers are another tasty option. For those looking for an extra boost in glucose, they can even make a quick s'more. Honey or syrup. A tablespoon or 15 milliliters of honey or syrup can do the trick. These items typically come in small, easy to carry packets, and they're also super delicious. Now back to our mind map. So now that we know the rule, let's go ahead and add in our mind map what 15 grams of fast acting carbs actually looks like. So maybe what we'll do here is just, let's put it in a rectangle and we'll change the color just to, I don't know, let's do yellow. And what I'll do is just I'll just take our chart here and I'll paste it in. Alright, now I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, 15, 15, 15. And then we've got our 15 grams of fast acting carbs. And then the other two 15s below. So I think that looks beautiful. Alright, now let's make an Anki card over those 15 grams of fast acting carbs. So let's go back to add. Now there's a couple different ways we could go about making these cards. We can make individual cards over each item or we can make a list and then close it off. But for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and do both. And then they're pretty fast cards, so it's not gonna hurt to have both. And if you're using the deck, you could go ahead and delete one or the other if you'd like. But I'll go ahead and walk through both. And I think the list view is probably a little bit faster, honestly. But if you just wanted to see things individualized you could do it this way as well it either way it's okay um, let's start off with the list view and i'll show you how i would set that up so when you have long lists of information uh, that's that really doesn't require you to ask individual questions about it it's just factual stuff you need to know uh, and especially numbers like in our case here so in the list view, I've got a list over here in my Notion tablet that I've written down. I'll go ahead and screenshot that and put it on the back side of this card. And what I'll do is I'll just add in the list view here. All right, so 15 grams of fast acting carbs. Now doing it in this list view, here's what we could do. Uh, we'll just close off the amount of each item that we would give because that's probably what you're going to be tested over. All right, now that's nine individual cards that we've made. We don't need to do all that. Let's just make three cards out of this and we'll just make it each three. 
So we'll change four through six to two. And then we'll change these to three. All right, now that gives us three real quick cards that we can make and we can test ourselves on the amount of each of those items we would give. And so that way we're actually learning what items we're giving, but we're knowing how much of it to give. So let's add that to the deck and then we can make individual cards for each of the items and we'll do it that way as well. By making this three different cards, that won't take you that much time and you'll be able to kind of fly through the deck once you have all this already understood. Even with the individual cards, since you already know the information, it should make going through them a breeze with cards like these. So let's make individual card types. I'll go ahead and add this into the deck. And let's start up top uh, with our fruit juice. Moving right along, making our individual cards, let's start with the orange juice. So to test ourselves just quickly over this information uh, as regarding 15 grams of carbs, Let's just ask ourselves how much how much orange juice is 15 grams of carbs. And that's 120 mils. We'll close that out. I'm going to go ahead and bold this. And you know what, just for fun, we'll change this to orange. I like that. All right, control enter, add that. Next up, we have our soda. And remember, not diet soda. We, get, we need that sugar in there. And that's also going to be 120 milliliters. Next up, we have that old skim milk. And you know what? Let's add in a milk emoji. I like that. And for skim milk, it's going to be eight ounces or 240 milliliters. Next, we have how many candies equal 15 carbs. Let's add in that screenshot. How many candies equal 15 grams of carbs? That's six to 10 candies. And you know, to stay consistent, let's just add that emoji in. Next up, we have our sugar. How many much sugar is 15 grams of carbs? That's four cubes or teaspoons. Let's add that in. Moving right along, we have saltines. How many saltines are 15 grams of carbs? That's six saltines. Add that in there. Next, we have the graham crackers. How many graham crackers are 15 grams of carbs? That would be three graham crackers. Control enter. Lastly, we have honey or syrup is 15 grams of carbs. And that is one tablespoon or 15 milliliters. So how much honey or syrup is 15 grams of carbs? That's one tablespoon or 15 milliliters. And we'll add that in there. Now, when blood glucose levels drop into the severe hypoglycemia range, typically below 20, and the client is unable to swallow due to unconsciousness or convulsions, the 15-15-15 rule won't suffice. In such cases, administer one milligram of glucagon via intramuscular or subcutaneous injection as the initial step. If the patient remains unconscious after 10 minutes, administer a second dose of glucagon and immediately call 911 and follow their instructions. So now we've got the management of severe hypoglycemia, which is usually occurring below those levels of 20. So let's add that in as well under the management of hypoglycemia, but let's go ahead and say severe hypoglycemia. Add 
as we've learned, we're going to administer that one milligram of glucagon, then do a second dose if the patient remains unconscious for 20 minutes. And then after that, we're going to notify the healthcare provider and call 911 and follow their instructions. And so this is going to be typically under 20. Let's add in our steps. And because this is an emergency situation, I'm going to go ahead and leave these rectangle boxes just kind of signifying the importance of this. All right, so this is going to be what we do in case of that severe hypoglycemia. We know we're going to administer that one milligram of glucagon. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add in like a syringe emoji just to kind of really show us what's going on this process. Here we're going to call 911 and the provider. So let's put a phone. I like that. And because we got to wait 10 minutes to see if that first initial dose is working, uh, let's, let's put in a timer. So now let's hop over and make a card over what we should educate the patient on in the event of severe hypoglycemia. And also too, it's not just the patient education. This is important for anybody in the house, so family, friend education, because if the patient with diabetes has a severe hypoglycemia uh, event, so this is really important to not only for the patient to know, but also for the family and caregivers and friends of this patient. You can't perform any treatment if you're unconscious. So let's hop back over to Anki and we'll add in our slide from our PowerPoint. And to make this just one card, let's just give ourselves a little bit of a hint here as we're uh, going through, because we've already learned the information. So our card is just to remind us and be able to actively recall the information. So we'll just do administer left out and then we'll close off that part. We'll administer second dose. And lastly, we'll call 911 and follow instructions. For severe hypoglycemia for our proper treatment, and it's usually gonna look under 20, you're gonna administer that one milligram of glucagon Ensure that second dose if the patient remains unconscious after 10 minutes. If we're not seeing any results and the patient isn't coming to, then we know uh, we need to call 911 and follow their instructions. So let's add that. Foot care is a top priority for individuals with diabetes due to reduced sensation and slow wound healing, which increases the risk of infections and in severe cases, amputation. It's crucial for patients to proactively care for their feet to maintain overall health. Daily foot inspection. Begin by encouraging patients to inspect their feet daily, paying special attention to the areas between their toes. Given that many people overlook this aspect, suggest setting a daily alarm on their smartphone at a convenient time to prompt this essential activity. Proper foot washing. Daily foot hygiene is essential. Recommend washing their feet with lukewarm water, not hot, and soap followed by thorough drying. Ensure they check the water temperature with a thermometer and not just their hand, and confirm it's below 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Emphasize that they shouldn't soak their feet for prolonged periods either. Moisturizing. After bathing, advise them to apply moisturizing cream to their feet, excluding the areas between their toes. This precaution is crucial because excessive moisture in this region can lead to skin breakdown and potential infections. Cotton socks. Patients should wear cotton socks every day. Cotton socks are breathable and help absorb moisture. Moisture can lead to skin irritation, fungal infections, and blisters, which are of particular concern for individuals with diabetes due to their heightened risk of foot complications. Cotton socks also tend to be smoother with fewer seams, reducing friction against the skin and lowering the risk of blisters or sores. Shoe selection. When it comes to shoes, recommend avoiding consecutive use of the same pair. Shoes should be made of breathable materials. 
encourage patients to periodically inspect their shoes for signs of wear and tear to ensure they provide adequate support and protection. Checking for foreign objects. Before putting on shoes, advise patients to check for foreign objects like nails, pebbles, or rocks. This simple precaution can prevent unexpected discomfort or injuries. Shoe shopping timing. When it's time for new shoes, suggest that patients shop in the later part of the day. Feet tend to be at their largest during this time due to factors like swelling, prolonged standing, and of course, gravity. Trimming toenails. When trimming toenails, educate patients to cut them straight across. This practice helps prevent ulcers, infections, and minor traumas that can result from cutting toenails too short. It also reduces the risk of ingrown toenails, which can be quite troublesome. Foot protection. Emphasize the importance of never going barefoot, as it's a recipe for potential accidents and injuries. Footwear choice. Discourage the use of sandals with open toes or straps. These types of footwear can expose the feet to accidental injuries, dirt, and debris. Remember Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong and it often applies to open toe sandals. Lastly, caution patients against using hot water bottles, heating pads, or portable heaters. While these may seem cozy, they can lead to severe burns and injury. It's best to steer clear of these heating devices to ensure safety. By following these foot care guidelines, patients can significantly reduce the risk associated with diabetes-related foot complications and maintain their overall well-being. All right, moving right along. Coming up next, we've got our diabetic foot care. And this is extremely important with diabetes as we've gone over throughout this lecture series. And if you've seen this in the hospital, I'm telling you, it gets pretty gnarly. And if you haven't, when you do, you'll, you'll definitely understand the importance of why foot care is so paramount when it comes to patients with diabetes and checking their feet and really adhering to this uh, patient education because I can promise you it's not pretty uh, if things go south. Now with the diabetic foot care, instead of adding in all these long lists, so usually with mind maps, you wanna keep just one to two words or a small phrase if possible. So instead of writing out this long list that we've went through in our lecture, I'm just gonna add in the key words and phrases just to kind of remind us of where this all fits in. All right, well, that's quite the list, but that's not too bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a list view card of these in Anki's, and then also we'll go through and make an individual card as well. That way you have both, and you can kind of really solidify and crystallize that knowledge. And moreover, diabetic foot care is really important. So it's good to know these uh, patient education points, not just for your test, but really when you're providing that education in the clinical setting. So let's dive over on into Anki again. And we'll start off with our list view. What I'll do is I'll put a screenshot of the entire list below here. So when I have lists that are this long, what I'll usually do is just count up the number of items that I have in the list. And then I want to stick to about three to four a card. So let's count here. We got So we've got 14 pieces of information here. So probably if we do those three a piece, uh, you know, come out with five, five cards, four or five cards. So what I'll do probably with these easier sections here, they're short, probably lump these together. Um, so probably two, we'll make, we'll make, we'll just make these last two about temperature one, and then we'll do three uh, from there. All right, now that we got those closed off, let's go ahead and just make this a little bit more simple. We don't need 14 cards. So we'll make the first three, card one. These three, card two. Do these three. And we'll make these last two, uh, the fifth card. I like doing the list like this. You can kind of see an overview of all that foot care in one spot. 
And then the benefit of actually doing cards this way and then also individually, uh, you can see it in list view, then you can see it isolated from the list, and then you also have got your mind map on the back of the card that we'll add in. So you're really tackling this in two different ways. And then having the mind map on the back allows you to see where it's at in, in the broader picture of diabetes mellitus patient management and diabetes mellitus in general. And then you can really start to think about this and like, this really is a circulatory problem. Then you really start to understand that this all ties in together with perfusion. And then that has to do with peripheral artery disease and then so on and so forth. So let's start off making our individual cards uh, over our foot care, starting with inspecting our feet. So how often should the patient inspect their feet? And that's going to be daily with that extra concern with the areas between the toes. Add that in there. So how often should the patient wash their feet and how? Daily with the lukewarm water and soap, then dry thoroughly. So what should be done before stepping into a bathtub? And that's going to be to check the temperature to make sure it's under 110 Fahrenheit and not to use their hand because that could cause a burn as well, uh, but to use a thermometer. And let's go ahead and add in a thermometer emoji. All right. So where should the patient not apply moisturizing cream after bath? And that's going to be between the toes. And let's just bold not. <laughs> what type of socks should the patient wear every day? And that's going to be our clean cotton socks. How many days should the patient wear the same shoes? And that's going to be not no consecutive days as long as the shoes remain intact. All right, next up, we're going to look at the check the shoes for foreign objects like nails, pebbles before wearing the shoes. So what should the patient do before putting on their shoes? You're going to want to check for foreign objects. Control enter, add that in. When should new shoes be purchased? Now it's going to be later in the day. How should the patient trim their nails? That's going to be straight across. Should the patient wear sandals or go barefoot? Nope. We'll just add in that, that we'll just add in that sandals uh, PowerPoint there too. Just kind of knock both those out. And then lastly, we're gonna advise them not to use those hot water bottles, heating pads, or portable heaters, uh, because they might they might not be able to feel the heat and run the risk of a burn injury. So let's add in a card for that. I put these little hyphens there to let us know how many items we'll have in this card. Uh, but we'll make this just one because this will be a quick card to answer. We'll swap those over to one and then go ahead and control enter. All right, that'll be our diabetic foot care. While falling ill is a part of life, there are crucial guidelines that individuals with diabetes should be aware of during illness. Regular blood glucose monitoring. Stress the importance of monitoring blood glucose levels every three to four hours while sick. If their blood glucose level exceeds 240, advise them to check their urine for ketones. Continuing medications. It's essential for patients to understand that they should not stop taking their insulin or any other anti-diabetic medications during illness. Medications should remain unchanged to maintain stable blood glucose levels. Preventing dehydration. To prevent dehydration while ill, recommend that the patient consume a minimum of four ounces of sugar-free, non-caffeinated fluids every hour they are awake. When it comes to nutrition, inform the patient that if they're having difficulty tolerating solid food, they can consume soft foods or liquids to meet their carb requirements. Rest. Emphasize the importance of getting ample rest, which is beneficial for recovery during illness. When to contact a healthcare provider. Instruct patients to contact their healthcare provider if they experience the following symptoms. Persistent nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Moderate to large urine ketones. Elevated glucose levels that don't improve with treatment. 
and a temperature exceeding 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to highlight the severity of diarrhea, which can lead to skin breakdown and electrolyte imbalances. Encourage patients to seek medical attention promptly if they experience persistent diarrhea, as it can have significant health implications. Let's go back to our mind map and finish up with our sick day rules. Sick day rules. Now there's our sick day rules. Notifying that provider, monitoring blood glucose every three to four hours, making sure if those blood glucose levels are over 240, checking those urine ketones, consuming soft foods or liquids to meet that carb content, making sure to consume at least four ounces or 120 mils of sugar-free non-caffeinated fluid every hour awake to prevent dehydration, rest well and now this is a very high yield fact here. You're gonna advise the patient you do not stop any of your insulin or any other of their anti-diabetic medications while they're ill. All right, now that we got our sick day rules in our mind map, let's jump over to Anki and make a few cards. And for starters, let's add in uh, the list view. And we'll take our overview PowerPoint slide and add it in the back as well. I'm not going to close off this rest well because I believe we should all be resting well and that'll be just by itself here. We don't need to test ourselves on that. So we'll just make uh, with the six cards, we'll just make two cards here and then we'll make individual ones for each of these items. All right, beautiful. That is two nice little cards of an overview of our item list of our sick day rules and I'll add that. Now let's go through and do our individual cards. I'm going to leave this overview chart here as well as add in another PowerPoint slide of each one we're talking about. So, so first off, so I know what we're talking about, I'm going to leave the sick day rules up on top here. I'm going to do that. So how often should the patient monitor their blood glucose levels? That's going to be every three to four hours. When should the patient test for urine ketones when sick? That's going to be if their blood glucose is over 240. I'm just going to put that in a yellow highlight. All right, this next one, I believe, is probably one of the most high yield facts here on the sick day rules. So I'm going to add in, I'm going to add this in up top just so we can be reminded to really pay attention to this. How is the patient's insulin or medication regimen altered during sickness? And this is going to be unchanged. They're not going to stop taking any of the insulin or any of their oral anti-diabetic medications while they're sick. So they're going to keep up with the same type of regimen that they did beforehand. So being sick is not going to alter any of their medication regimen or insulin therapy. All right, add that in. How much fluid should the patient consume during illness? That'll be at least four ounces or 120 milliliters of that sugar-free, non-caffeinated fluid every hour awake to prevent dehydration. Let's add that in there. So how should the patient meet their nutrition requirements? And this is just, they're gonna consume that soft foods or liquids to meet carb content if the solid food isn't being tolerated. All right, back to our mind map. Now let's wrap up with our last slide on when to call the provider or when the patient is sick. And so let's add in so let's add in another branch here. All right, so we're gonna call our provider when we got that persistent nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that elevated temperature of 105 and higher, that moderate to large urine ketones, that's definitely gonna be indicative of our DKA or we're in that metabolic acidosis. And lastly, if those elevated glucose levels are not resolving due to any of your treatment, and then you're definitely gonna to need to call the provider. And we'll just place that right there. And let's take a look at our map and see how it's coming along. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a gorgeous mind map. 
Uh, we've made all these connections and we can visualize it in this like network type fashion. We're not seeing it just line by line in a textbook or in a notepad. And we've made individual cards for everything. And then we're going to be able to visualize this information and trace it back to the main topic. And then also start making those connections to the broader picture as well within the scope of nursing and physiology. So to me, this has just been wonderful. I love doing this this way. It really just makes all the information come together. So with all that said, let's finish up with our last card here that we're going to make on when to call the provider. Let me grab a screenshot here of our last slide. Paste it here. So for this card, we're going to keep it kind of basic. We're just going to leave it in this list view. There's no need, I think, really to make individual cards on this. We can just close off the last bit of it, give ourselves a little bit of a hint, and then just have one nice card to uh, let us remember when those patients need to call the provider when they're sick. So we'll close off the last bit here. Now let's just make that one nice card for our when to contact the provider during sick days. All right, let's add that in. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our cards and our mind map for the diabetes lecture series. Let's go ahead and add in that mind map on the back of our cards uh, before we go. And then I'll see you in that study with me video. So to add in the patient education, I think what I'm going to do is just take a screenshot of just what we've done here in the patient education side of the map. Screenshot that there. Let's go to the browse uh, feature in our diabetes mellitus deck. And since I've got everything tagged under patient education, let's just search that real quick. And this should bring up everything we've done today. All right, well, there you have it. We've got our mind map added to the back of all the cards we've made for the patient education. Now we're ready to study those cards and be able to see all those connections we made within our mind map for diabetes mellitus. I look forward to seeing you in that study with me video where we're gonna take all this and we're gonna study it together. We'll hit our Anki cards. We'll make all these connections. We'll work through it all where we're gonna solidify that knowledge for the long run. Look forward to seeing you there. And there you have it. The conclusion of our comprehensive series on diabetes mellitus. I hope this information helps carry you through the rest of your nursing studies and to help you manage diabetes effectively. Remember, whether it's understanding the 15-15-15 rule for managing hypoglycemia, practicing essential foot care, or knowing how to navigate illness with diabetes, these insights can make a significant difference in the lives of individuals with diabetes. Thank you so much for joining me here at Nursing Without Notes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more nursing content. And also, be sure to send it to a classmate who you think could benefit from this as well. So keep up the good work. You're doing awesome. And we'll see you in that next video.